everybody. So with Halloween just around the corner, I decided to do a top nine game of all the horror themed game that I've played. So I've decided which game were horror themed mainly by letting BGG tell me. So I went through all the games that I've played and see which one BGG has as horror as a theme. And then I've put all those into the pub meeples and then that's how I came up with my top nine list. So let's get started and look at number nine. So in the number nine uh, position, I have Gloom. So Gloom is a small little card game and the cards are all semi see-through. So most of it is see-through, but there'll be the printed stuff on it that's not. And so it's really neat looking. So every uh, player will start with a set of characters for each of their families that they're playing with. So I believe there's five different characters and you'll have like a little description on that. The goal of the game is to get your family members as depressed as you can and when their depressed score is as low as you can go, you kill them off. So you'll have your characters in front of you and you'll have all these cards that are mostly see-through and then you'll be able to play a card on top of it. And the card could be something like you were getting married but you got stood up by the altar. So that a horrible experience actually gave you a negative 30 mood score. And the idea is to get your family members as low a score as possible and then on your, on your neck, when it's your turn again, kill them off. Now the other players, and you would do this to the other players as well, there are some cards that are going to be kind of more cheerful. It's like, yes, you were a little bit sad, but you ended up going for a picnic and ended up making a really good friend, so your mood actually goes up plus 20. Now, depending on where it is, so if the minus 30 that you have from being stood up as the altar was actually on the bottom minus 20, and then in the middle minus 10 for a total of minus 30, and then this park that gave you a positive 20 actually covered where the minus 20 was, and now it's plus 20 minus 10, so you're actually at plus 10. And so it's kind of interesting how, depending on the card that you play, what portion will be covered from the previous cards, and then how this, that will affect the score of your different characters. Then at the end of the game, uh, when uh, one player has killed off all the character triggers, the end of the game, and whoever has the lowest score is the winner. So it's a funny, neat, kind of well thought out game. I've also actually played the Game of Thrones version of this one as well, which was equally fun as well. Um, so in number nine position, that was Gloom. So in number eight is Mysterium. So Mysterium is very much like a Dixit game, uh, but it's a bit more structured. So the story behind it is there was a murder that was that happened and the ghost that is remembering this murder doesn't remember all the details and they can't communicate very well and he can just give you vision while you're sleeping so each round you're giving these very cryptid odd looking image cards to each player trying to point out who the murderer was where the murder took place with once they kind of moved on and what the murder weapon was um so it kind of takes the concept of Dixit with um, trying to guess all the different cards and trying to guess what, whose cards um, was for that particular description and uh, turn it to a bit more of a game. So it's a neat, cute game, very abstract, but uh, it's one that I personally enjoy quite a bit. Unfortunately, not everybody in my family enjoy this one as much as I do, so it doesn't get played quite as much and maybe that's why it's in the number eight position. So then, in number seven, I have Elder Sign. So what's neat with Elder Sign is that it'll play up to eight players. I'm not saying that it's always the best that way because it gets really busy with all the players, but it's neat to have one that can um, involve a lot of different players. And we actually played this one last Halloween and it was pretty great. Um, so this is following the Cthulhu theme. Um, and basically you're trying to stop these cultists from opening this rift into this underworld and allowing all these bad demons into our world. Um, and this is a dice game. 
and the components are beautiful with this one so you have all these cards that are on the table and you'll kind of select where you want to send your character and once you get there you have dice that you can roll and you'll get items that allow you to get more dice or more powerful dice or allows you to manipulate your dice and you'll need to roll and try to match the symbol that are on there so there'll be different lines could be two three lines and you can roll as long as you're able to accomplish one line at a time you can keep going as well and then if you're able to resolve that location then you get the benefit of it and kind of moves you up you're trying to collect um elder signs to uh stop the cultists from bringing in the big monster and then you have this clock as well that kind of keeps track of the rounds and every time it strikes midnight the um what's happening kind of changes you draw another card and be like okay well this round you don't get to use the yellow dice or something will happen and it's never something good um it's been one that's interesting i really enjoy this one with the dice checking it's been fun um a lot of luck with uh being a dice game so you know if that's something that is not you know something you enjoy then that might that might show up there but and again I really like how it'll cover up to eight players um, and it's a, it's been a good one so my next uh, in number six position my next game is Arkham Horror the card game so I bought this game quite a while ago I got into seriously into board gaming probably 2017 and I would say I got this one beginning 2018 so I wasn't a very seasoned player at that point and for some reason I found this game so hard to learn even though Fantasy Flight has made an amazing tutorial video that's almost like watching a movie so I definitely recommend if you're learning this game to watch that video it's so good but I still really struggled learning this one and I don't know if it's me if it's just a, a little bit more complicated game to learn um, this is still again a Cthulhu themed game um, kind of follows very much the the story of the elder sign except this one definitely has a little bit more of a story um, so in this one you all start into the same room and they've got to try to get figure out how to get out so you start by reading the card and it tells you what you need to do in order to be able to flip the card over and then once you've accomplished that and you can flip the card over it tells you okay this is what happened and then the floor collapsed or whatever and then like these new cards come out and then the symbol on the bottom of the cards will match another card so if the office has a similar symbol as the hallway then you know these two cards are connected so your character can move from one of those locations to the next one if it's unlocked or the hallway could be connected to both the basement and the attic or different things like that right and then that's all kind of figured out by the symbol um, and then with this one you get a bag that you'll draw out to, of the bag what's going to be happening when you uh, when you do your attacks and see if you're successful or what's what's been happening um, you'll suffer sanity you'll suffer health damage you'll have different items and you can um, you're like as you progress throughout the game like some of your cards will improve as well so it's it was a neat one I definitely enjoy this one like I said though I did find this one very difficult to learn how to play but now that I do it's one that I do enjoy um, this one I'll point out is a two-player game unless you have two of the base game then you could make it into a four-player game um, but it's really more meant to be a solo or two-player game so then next in my number five position is Betrayal of House on the Hill and um, this is a game that I really really enjoy what's neat with this one is you start off with the one main tile and from there you can spread out or you can go upstairs and as you move your character around and then you'll bring in new cards and then the cards on the back it'll say whether it's a level floor or the upper floor if it's a basement card so you'll kind of find the one that you need and flip it over so you never know how this mansion is all going to come together and then you'll have some cards that'll um, flip over and be like oh there's an item in this room so you kind of collect more items or there'll be an omen and if there's an omen then you have to roll your dice to see if you're going to trigger the haunt so you never know which scenario you're going to be ending up with either 
So if you trigger the haunt and then you're in the library, so then it's like, oh, so you trigger the haunt in the library and you have this with this item, then that gives you scenario number 28. And then you'll flip over to the number 28 scenario and it tells you how that develops. So maybe one of the characters become a werewolf or uh, different things starts happening. And it always tends to be that it becomes a one versus uh, all the others. And you never know which one is going to be uh, the one that becomes kind of the bad guy. And then so once the haunt is triggered, the group that is still good will kind of read the scenario of how they need to defeat the bad guy. The other one kind of goes in the next room and see what they need to do to win the game. And they kind of all come back and then the whole uh, play can change. Um, I've heard that some of the scenarios are a little bit flawed um, and they've kind of have new expansions that I guess kind of comes out and then are a little bit better, but I haven't personally come across that yet. Um, I found this one so interesting because you just never know how the game is going to go. So it's one that I definitely enjoy. Um, one thing I would point out is the um, every character gets like a little disc to keep track of your sanity and your um, your speed and all this sort of stuff and it the the one that came with the game kept falling off so I actually got the upgraded version that has the little dial so you can just turn the dial over and then I thought that made the game um, a lot pleasant a lot more pleasant to play so this one great one definitely like it and that was the number five position so in number four position I have Mansion of Madness 2nd Edition. So Mansion of Madness is pretty new to me so I haven't played this one a whole lot. Um, it is an app driven game and that might be why it's not kind of a little bit higher up there. Now when I've played it the last time I made it so that the app was on the TV so everybody could watch the TV. Um, but to improve the play I would say that if you pass the app or like the tablet or the phone or whatever it is that you're using around to the player that could, so they can read their own when it's on their turn and kind of point out what they're doing it might make it a little bit more inclusive because otherwise when it's one person that controls the the app the whole time and read everything out mostly if you've got multiple players it kind of becomes okay well this is your game and i'm just moving when it's when you tell me i can't move um but this one, like uh, Betrayal of House on the Hill, is very interesting as in you start with one tile and as you go around the tile comes out. But this isn't random, like it's specific based on the scenario that you're doing. So if you go into this room, the app will tell you, okay, well this room comes up and there's something, papers on the floor there that you can investigate and then you notice that there's a weapon at that end that you could go and pick up and so it's a little bit more structured in that way. Um, and the story of it was very interesting. Um, so this one, this, definitely the story element is a lot, lot stronger compared to the Betrayal of House on the Hill because with Betrayal of House on the Hill, you get a glimpse of the story once the haunt is started, but otherwise it's not very story driven. Uh, this one definitely has a lot more going on and it's neat too because if you take too much sanity damage, you'll go insane. And then you have to take an insanity card and depending on what that says, how that's going to affect you. Now it could just be, you know what, nothing happens to you, you're pretty strong. But the other players don't know what your cards say, so they might kind of still create a little bit of distrust. It's like, okay, well, are you still on our side, or have you gone in, like, totally insane, and you're, you got a different winning condition now? Like, so that aspect I thought was neat. Definitely a great game, and I have enjoyed this one quite a bit. Definitely on the higher side, price-wise. So keep that in mind as well. Then in number three position, I have. Legendary Encounters, an alien deck building game. And this one is so good, so good. I really enjoy the deck building. And I had played this one quite a few years ago and I was impressed with how good it was. But I had never watched the alien movies or the predator movie, or like any of that. 
So recently with uh, my spouse and my stepson, we watched the whole Alien uh, series and I remember this game and I was like, wait, hold on, I think that game was even better than I thought. So I arranged to borrow a copy and we played it and it's so thematic to the movie, it's insane how good this is. Um, so on the top of the board you'll have card that comes up and they're face down so you don't know what's coming. Now you can scan the room and see if there's anything in there and it'll be like, oh well this alien that's in there or this is happening or um, maybe you kind of flip the card over and it's a face hugger and this is a thing that attaches itself to your face and if you do not get this face hugger destroyed before it's your turn again it will become a chest burster that will go into your discard pile so chest burster in your discard pile not so bad but when you run out of cards and you gotta shuffle your discard pile to put that as your new deck there's a chest burster in there at some point and when that card comes out this alien burst out of your chest and you die just like so thematic to the movie this is by far my favorite uh, legendary encounters I've also played this one and the uh, 007 one but this one is so good and so thematic to the movies as well so really really enjoy this then in my number two position I have Arkham Horror um, and this one is the the third I think it's the third um, edition um, and I just recently purchased this one as well and again it's a Cthulhu themed um, game and out of all of the Cthulhu games I've had this is by far the most story driven one that I've found so you have the map that you built up and you get these cards depending on the scenario and you start with the first card and says okay this has been happening in the town and you're not sure what's going on so they say kind of go around collect clues and then when you collect so many clues you can flip that card over and then once you flip that card over you kind of start finding out more about what's happening in this town so you're investigating at the same time because it's completely unclear as to what needs to happen for you to win until you've developed the story uh, enough to, to discover that. And this also has a pandemic, um, pandemic game style a little bit to it because um, you will have these token in the bag so at the end of each round then you're going to pull out these and it's like oh okay I'm good nothing happened on this one or oh another clue comes out. Well, and then when a clue comes out, you got to draw the card out of the location deck and that tells you where the clue goes. So you'll add a clue to that location and you take the top three cards at that spot and then you shuffle the clue in. But then when like the haunts or whatever starts spreading, the doom starts to spread as well, you pull that from the bottom of the deck and you flip it over and then a doom spreads over there and do, you know so that will be spreading as well and then at some point there's going to be a batter thing that's going to happen that's going to take all of those discarded dooms out and you shuffle all of those and you put them back at the back of the thing so you know that the next card that comes out is already one that's already had doomed added to it so if you don't clear that out and you have a location that gets either three doom on the one spot or five at the entire um, district, well now an anomaly develops. And then the anomaly kind of covers and it blocks your clues. If there were clues there, you no longer get access to that. And bad, like the event that happens there are even worse now. So the, the anxiety that this causes is so neat. I really enjoyed this one. And then, finally, in the number one position, I have Nemesis. Um, I've only played Nemesis the one time about a year ago, but it was so good. This is basically uh, Aliens, again. And it happens, you're on this ship and you wake up and you're not sure what's happening. And you go around and you kind of have cars that tells you different ways that different things that you need to happen in order to win the game and you'll randomly pick one now it could be something as good as like okay if you everybody gets out and you manage to get away and then you would win but it could be that you get special 
instructions and you actually need to make sure that so many people are killed or something happened that not necessarily everybody survives and you're not sure what everybody's goals are which is again very thematic to the aliens movies because we found out part way through the movie that some people had the um instruction to bring this aliens back to earth instead of just killing it and get everybody get away right so it's neat like you're not sure who necessarily is helping you or not helping you you're going around the ship trying to get your things resolved and mo like the aliens will pop out and then you got to try to kill them and then fires can come up and then it's so neat oh let me show you a picture here so neat um it comes with a little miniatures across the game this definitely played long when we played this i think we were at it about three hours but you don't notice it it just flies right by um, I really, really enjoyed this one. It was so good. I don't own this one, so I've only played it that one time and it left such a good experience for me and then feel for it. So eventually is definitely one I'd like to add. But again, this one comes with a hefty price tag, so we'll see. Um, and then that was it for my top nine. So here's a recap of all of the top nine horror themed games. Uh, that I have played so far. Now there might be other games that you'd be like, oh, this one is so much better, but I just haven't played them yet. Unfortunately, there's only so much playing a girl can do. Um, so that was it for me today. So please follow me on Facebook. My Facebook page is Ditsbury and Area is playing all the game. I am also on Instagram as board game underscore mama and my YouTube channel is board game mama. So we'll see you again maybe with another top nine.